This video will be divided into two parts. So for this video, part one, I'll go over the video performance for both cameras during vlogging and B-rolls, their video stabilization during walking and light physical activity, and the handling of both of these cameras while walking and vlogging. All right, let's get this started. All right, so I'm out on a morning hike and I thought this would be a good time to bring out the Sony Xperia Pro-i and the Sony ZV-E10 and do some video footage in uh, a bright environment. If you remember from my past two videos, I was testing their video performance in low light. So today, let's see how they do uh, compared to each other in bright light. So basically both of these devices are going to be in auto mode. Everything is on auto. I'm going to be using the main camera for the Sony Xperia Pro and of course the Sony ZV-10 only has one camera. I will record the audio with the mono mode and wind reduction option turned on from the Sony Xperia Pro I. And for the Sony ZV-10 I'm going to be using a lapel microphone which is also in mono mode. So you'll be able to hear if there is a big difference between the two methods of recording audio. I know I mentioned that there will be audio for the ZV-E10, but I made a little mistake, which I will go over in part two. The camera did not record audio for part one. However, the issue has been fixed for the ZV-E10 in part two. For the image stabilization performance of the ZV-E10, I decided to show two modes. So I'm gonna show the footage for a little bit with the stabilization off and then how it looks after it's run through Sony's Catalyst Browse. When I ran each file through Catalyst Browse in auto mode, basically I just let the Catalyst Browse do what it thought would be best to fix the stabilization of the files, you can see it crops in really close to my face. For vlogging, this is a bit close, so we want to kind of back up a little bit so you can see uh, more of what's going on and not every single detail of my face. So what I did was just apply a 10% crop to each file and it seems like it did a really good job stabilizing the footage. There's a little bit of shaking here and there, but a lot better than before. So you're going to see what it looks like before it's stabilized and afterwards. So Catalyst Browse has its advantages and disadvantages when it comes to fixing the stabilization performance for videos coming from the ZV-E10. And I'll go over a few here shortly after this portion. So it's about 10 a.m. in the morning and you can see that it's raining and there is an overcast. So you can see how both of these devices perform in an environment like this. So I'm going up some hills during this hike so you'll be able to see how the image stabilization is during uh, movements that are not normal for walking. So the purpose of this video is to show the vlogging capabilities of both of these cameras in video mode and recording in auto. You're going to have to excuse my breath here sometimes because I'm going up a hill now. I'm using the Sony Bluetooth grip with Remote Commander. I hope I got that correct. For the Sony Xperia Pro I, it's a very good grip for vlogging. The problem is the 
functions on the grip doesn't work all the time. So if I want to go ahead and record video from the grip, I have to check the Sony Xperia Pro I to see if it is recording. So I'm not confident with using the recording button on the grip. I will just go ahead and use it from the device itself. When I first started recording with the ZB10 during the early portion of this hike, I noticed it wasn't focusing on my face despite having face priority turned on. And it turns out that a lot of the mistakes in this video is really my fault. But during these hikes, there's a lot going on, so many things that I had to focus on. And later on in this video, I'm gonna explain why this was happening. For the rest of the video though, my face will be in focus, so you don't have to worry about it being out of focus for the entire video. The tripod or the handheld grip I use for the ZB10 is the Ulanzi MT-16. Now this has been promoted heavily on YouTube as a really good tripod. It is rated for DSL cameras, smartphones, and action cameras according to their website. But what I noticed during this hike is I wasn't confident with it being secured to my camera and throughout this hike I did complain frequently that I thought it might fall off of it. See here, it, it moves like left to right from this point here. The other weak point on this tripod is here, where it connects from the tripod head to the camera body. I always have to worry if this is gonna come loose. So despite what a lot of reviewers want to say on YouTube about how great this tripod is, yeah, it might be for the first couple of weeks or a month, but I've had this tripod for about, I think almost a year now, and it's, it's already showing its age. I, I just wouldn't trust it for vlogging with something like this. Okay, I'm almost done with this first hill here. So maybe you can hear me a little bit better. The problem with the Xperia Pro and the ZV-10 is the buttons are very sensitive. So I'm trying to switch between these two devices to film this video. And what I notice is maybe during the, this hike, I'm bumping some buttons. So a lot of the settings are being changed. So you have to make sure if you're doing this type of vlog that you check your settings before you start recording. All right, so do you remember earlier in this video, I talked about how it was my fault that the ZB-10 could not focus clearly on my face? Well, the reason is during this hike, I had a transition from the ZB-10 to the Xperia Pro-I and of course the movements from myself walking and probably I accidentally touched the spot focus option on the ZB-10. And the thing with the LCD screen for this camera is it can be kind of difficult to see in certain bright environments. So I probably had that turned on and I didn't notice it. And of course it would just focus on maybe the background instead of on my face. It's a good thing that when I went into a darker area, I was able to catch it and fix this for later footage in the video. So just like I mentioned earlier, the screens for both the Xperia Pro I and the ZV-10 are a bit sensitive. It's easy to activate certain settings and because of the dimness of both of these screens, it can be difficult to detect immediately and correct it. I feel a lot more confident doing a walking vlog with the Sony Xperia Pro I attached to this Sony Bluetooth grip. It's so stable and it's very light. You can see using the Sony ZV-10 with that Sigma 16 millimeter lens, it's very cumbersome. It's kind of heavy and vlogging, it's gonna get tiresome. It will get tiresome after a few minutes. So I think in bright light, when, it's, when the lighting is good, the Sony Xperia Pro is a better option than the ZB-10 for vlogging in environments like this. In this footage, you can see it's a bit challenging to vlog with the ZB-10 at arm's length in this type of terrain. You have to focus on a lot of things at once just to get a few seconds of footage. But the ZB-E10 has a significant advantage over the Xperia Pro-I, which I will talk about shortly. 
And yes, I did give my opinion on uh, possibly Xperia Pariah is a better device for these types of vlogs. And I'm not supposed to give my opinion, I want you to look at the footage and of course the handling and everything else for both of these cameras and let you decide. But I feel that this needs to be pointed out because Sony does market the ZV-10 as a vlogging camera. We don't just vlog from stationary positions. However, look at the video quality of the ZV-E10. It's, it's just, it's good. And some people like that bokeh or that blurring of the background and the ZV-E10 does an excellent job of doing that. And it, sometimes you have to wonder, is the, the weight and the bulkiness and the, the cumbersome of the ZV-E10, is it worth dealing with for this excellent video quality? Yeah, sometimes it is. And I feel happy when I see the footage from the ZV-E10. It's, it makes doing these kind of vlogs worthwhile. When I look at the Xperia Pro, I'm, sometimes I'm kind of, and eh, the footage is, is good, but not so good. One of the advantages the Sony Xperia Pariah has over the ZV-10 when it comes to vlogging in environments like this, it's so easy to start up. All I have to do is hit that videography button and start recording. I don't have to worry about flipping open the screen, turning on the camera, checking all the different settings. This literally took me about a second to turn on and start vlogging right now. You can see here how quick it is to access the Xperia Pro I and just start recording. It's it's amazing and that's the advantage of using this camera when you're doing these types of vlogs. You want something you want to just grab quickly and start recording. You don't have to worry about anything else. And as we can see from the videos of its auto performance, it's not that bad at all. It's pretty good for this small camera. Now, this is one of the things I forgot to mention earlier about some of the drawbacks of the ZV-10 and it's getting it into action. It takes some time and even in auto mode, you can just see that this camera, you gotta have patience and you have a lot more to work with. And this may be a turnoff for some people, but like I mentioned in my earlier comparisons, do you want easy handling over video quality? That's a decision that you're gonna have to make. But for me, when I made this video, I, I felt dealing with the flaws of the ZV-10 was worth the image quality it produced over the Xperia Pro I. But as I mentioned before, I prefer the Xperia Pro I for these types of vlogs where I'm doing a lot of physical movement. And I'm gonna keep praising this from the ZV-10. Just look at that video quality. I mean, this is just auto mode, no editing. And look at that background blur. It's compared to the Xperia Pro I, it's amazing. It gives the video a more uh, a professional look. That's what I hear a lot on YouTube. It, it looks more professional than, let's say, footage coming from a smartphone. I did mention earlier in the video that it was raining throughout this entire hike. You can kind of see it in some of the video. And that's one of the disadvantages of the ZV-E10 is that it is not resistant against this type of environment. So I couldn't get footage with the ZV-E10 when I was at this location. I had to resort to using the Xperia Pro I. And that's the thing, there is no camera that can do everything. And you can see during this hike, I had to bring both devices. I also threw in some footage of the Samsung Note 20 Ultra so you can see how a phone that uses more AI to process their videos compares to the Xperia Pro I and the ZV-10 which uses minimal AI processing for their video. And Samsung's video stabilization has been touted as one of the best for Android devices and you can see how it compares to the Xperia Pro I and the ZV-10. Just like I did with the Samsung Note 20 Ultra and Sony Xperia Pro I video performance comparison. I'm gonna go ahead and check the image stabilization with both of these cameras by first walking, jogging, and then sprinting. And this is kind of going uphill, so I might uh, be out of breath. So Sony Xperia Pro I walking, a brisk uh, pace. 
Then I'm gonna go ahead and start jogging. Let's see here. And then let's go ahead and sprint. Sprint up the hill. Uh, woo. All right. Uh, not too bad. So, stabilization test from walk to jog to sprint with the Sony Xperia Pro I. Switch over to the ZV-10. And my goodness, there's a big hill coming up. Here is the walk, jog, sprint portion for the ZVE-10. And remember that I am running these through Catalyst Browse with a 10% crop. And I'm gonna say this again, just look at that video quality. I know the stabilization isn't so great and probably if I cropped in even more, you're, you're gonna be looking at my pores or something. Gotta decide, is the image quality worth it over something like the Xperia Pro I. It's even for myself, I I have a hard time deciding which camera I want to use for most of my vlogs. I've been using Sony devices for a very long time and what I have to say is you have some good things about them and then you just have some things you you just wonder what were they thinking about when they came up with these cameras. Yeah, that's Sony for you, but that's my opinion. This Bluetooth grip is very comfortable. A lot more than that uh, junk Ulanzi one. Just being honest, that's a bad tripod compared to the Sony one. It's very comfortable, it conforms to the hand. It's awesome. I'm not trying to kiss up the Sony, but yeah, there's a big difference between using this grip and the Ulanzi one. Alright, so I reached the halfway point for this hike. It's all downhill, so you shouldn't hear me huffing and puffing anymore. There's still a light drizzle. Hopefully it's not gonna damage the lens and camera body for the ZV-10. But you can see that I'm doing a lot of the vlogs with the Xperia Pro I, just because it's waterproof. But as I mentioned earlier, it's very light. And I've been hiking already for about 30 minutes. So using this device, for long duration hikes is a lot easier than something like this, the ZB-10. Yup, I'm gonna say it again. Just look at the quality of this video. And this is auto mode. Imagine a person who doesn't have a lot of experience working with digital cameras or DSLRs. They pick one of these up and they just start recording and look what comes out of this camera. It's come a long way compared to older Sony cameras I've used. You know, sometimes I can be so stupid. I just realized there is a red record button on the Sony Bluetooth grip. And remember I mentioned that I didn't know if it was recording or not, but that just caught my eye right now. After 30 minutes, I can see there's a red record button. <laughs> so disregard what I said earlier about this Bluetooth grip, but Sometimes, I don't know if it's because of the Bluetooth connection or whatever, it will not record if you hit that movie button. And you do have to turn this around and either use the shutter button on top or the record button on the screen. Alright, let's check the image stabilization for the Sony Xperia Pro I. 
when I try to go through this type of environment. Let's see how far I can get going through this. So it's a bit tricky holding a phone and trying to navigate this, but I will try my best. All right, if I fall, at least I know the phone is waterproof. Yeah. All right. I'm not sure I want to try that with the Sony CB10. If it goes in the river, I think that's the end of that camera. But I will give it a try. This needs to be a fair comparison. And I want you to see what is a better device to use when doing these types of vlogs. Here is the ZB10 going through the same area that I did with the Xperia Pro I. And yes, when I was doing this portion of the video, I just kept thinking, please don't drop this camera, please don't drop this camera. Because if it falls inside the river, that's it. Especially the lens. I'm sure the lens would probably have been damaged. Now, why would I even risk this camera? Because I want to show this stabilization performance in a variety of settings. It, it seems like most of the stabilization performance on YouTube is done just walking. You rarely see a camera like this going through this type of environment. Would I recommend that most people do this with their camera? No, but at least you can see how the stabilization performance is if you decide to do something like this. All right, here's testing the image stabilization like your Parai going up some stairs. You can see these are not normal stairs. And then I will come back down them so you can see how it performs. Coming back down the stairs. Ooh. The Sony Xero Parai with this grip feels very solid coming down, you can see there's very little movement. Here is the CV10's video and stabilization performance going up and down some stairs. Now this gives you an idea of how this device performs if you want to do B-roll for your videos. I'm gonna try something a little bit more challenging to test the video performance and of course the image, stabil the image stabilization for the Sony Xperia Pro I. Yep, I'm gonna walk through all of that. Let's go. All right, so this gives you an idea if maybe this is a good alternative to using something like a GoPro or something similar. And while a GoPro is a little bit smaller and lighter, the, the image quality is not as good as something as the Xperia Pro I. But it's not too bad. Ooh, that was a slip. I'm able to get through here uh, pretty well. We just have to see if the stabilization matches a GoPro. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, look at that. Almost fell through that. All right, I think that's my end point 
for this test. Alright, now I'm going to check the video performance and the initial position coming through this portion of the TV This setting will give you an idea how this phone performs in a little bit darker environment. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the Sony ZV-E10. Let's hope I don't drop it because I can't buy another camera. And yes, that was going through my mind frequently when I was recording near this river. Just so many things could have went wrong because of the environment I was in. But you have to do this so that you can see how this camera performs in these type of environments. And I didn't point this out much throughout the video, but using the ZE-10 with the Sigma 16 millimeter lens is very tiresome on your arms, especially if you have to hold it out with your arm extended. And my arm is about three feet long, so can you imagine all that weight at the end of my hand? Yeah, you gotta spend some time in the gym to hold this camera up for prolonged periods. But remember, you can always throw on a compact lens that is a lot lighter than this one. It's just, this is all that I have available for vlogging. Don't let my opinion dissuade you from using the ZB-10 as a vlogging camera. Okay, this is an example of coming from a dark scene to a light scene. I switch over to the stereo microphones on this device so you can hear how it sounds. Let's see if the noise overpowers the recording capabilities. Alright, so for this part of the video, I'm going to do a panning shot from left to right and then I'll slowly increase the speed of the pan. An issue that some content creators look for is if a camera has rolling shutter or like a jelly effect when panning quickly left to right. Let's see if the Sony Xperia Pro I has something like that. Here is the panning performance for the ZV-E10, basically moving from left to right or right to left. the onboard microphones and I have it with the wind reduction turned on it does not have the wind reduction uh, device on top of it so it gives you an idea of how this sounds without it let's see how the stabilization performance is when I go up this hill using both the Xperia Pro I and the ZV-E10 to vlog all right here we go so making my way up this hill 
I am holding the Spirit Pro I one-handed and I'm trying to grab trees with the other while also checking my footing. So I don't recommend doing this unless you're confident about your abilities to go up hills and to hold a camera one-handed and to check your... Oh, I gotta switch it, gotta grab this branch. All right, almost to the top. I'm trying to look at which tree to grab on here. Okay, I think I'm all the way up. All right. Woo. And there we go. I'm at the top. Now I'm gonna try this hill again with the ZBE 10. It is a little bit heavier and I am using the Sigma 16 millimeter lens. So let's hope I don't lose my footing and roll down this hill. All right, here we go. Get me up. Uh, the sunblock is getting into my eyes. Uh, it's kind of hot today. So yeah. Oh yeah, it's a bit more difficult to go up this hill with the CVE-10 one-handed. Uh, but, you can do it. If you want to pull off this camera in this kind of environment with one hand. Alright, I'll switch. Ah, I'm slipping. Oh, Whew. That tree caught me. Thank you, tree. Uh, let's see if you can see my leg. All right, let's try that again. I'm gonna push myself back up. And here we go. Almost to the top. Oh, come on, don't fall. All right. Oh, that sunblock is in my eyes. And here we go. I had to mute the audio for the rest of this portion because the wind noise was just unbearable. It really overpowered the microphones for both of these cameras. Look what else happened when I was using the Ulanji grip with the ZVE-10. This ball head portion is very weak. I have this knob tightened all the way down and during the middle of filming it just fell down like this. I definitely would not use this grip for this camera and I actually only have the Sigma 30mm lens on it, not the larger 16mm. So maybe stick to just using smartphones and compact cameras for this grip model. I was supposed to record the ending for this video using the Sony Xperia Pro I, but the thing is, when I went to go turn it on, it just gives me a blank screen. I, I feel like a vibration whenever I touch the buttons, 
but I can't see the actual display. I'm thinking the phone is probably overheated. Uh, it was in my backpack hiking up to this location. So the temperature is around 30 to 32 degrees Celsius, but it's very windy. I'm actually using a windshield on my lapel microphone, but if I scan over here, you can see that the wind is pretty strong. The phone should have at least cooled down fairly quickly. I'm gonna come in here and I'll show you when I push the power button on the phone, it's just giving me beeps. The display won't show despite pushing on these buttons. I did try to hold the power button for about 10 seconds and it's just giving me beeps. So I'm guessing this phone is just too hot right now and I'm gonna have to wait until I return home and figure out how to turn this thing on or at least get the display to work. I'm using the Sigma 30 millimeter lens. So if I do try to do a vlog, it's gonna crop in really close to my face. So I'm just warning everyone, be aware of that. <laughs> wow, this is a really tight crop. I can actually see it in the LCD screen. Even though it's pretty bright right now, uh, this one does a lot better job of letting me see what I'm recording compared to the Sony Xperia Pro i. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found some of the information useful. And this comparison gives you some more ideas on which camera you want to use for your vlogging situations. Let's go ahead and go into part two where I'm going to take both of these cameras into even brighter lighting environments such as this. So a lot of the footage from both cameras is going to be done from around 12 p.m. in the afternoon to about now, three or four in the afternoon. So just in case you want to vlog in this type of environment, you can see how the video performance is for both of these cameras and also the image stabilization. I apologize for this extremely close up shot of my face, <laughs> but this is the only lens I had available right now because of the issue with my Xperia Pro I. Until next time, stay safe, keep learning. Aloha.